The seventh module revisits and expands upon materials and concepts delivered in previous modules, particularly Module 3, Population Genetics. This is done through the lens of genetic markers, which we have argued are the means by which we draw genetic inferences. In particular, we expand our discussion to include genomics and the layered effects of measuring genetic diversity at the nucleotide level. To put this module in perspective, recall our claim that population genetics is largely about three things. How much genetic diversity is there? How is that diversity distributed? And how did it get to be that way? Thus, the title of this module, Measuring, Organizing, and Interpreting Marker Variation. We will review some familiar measures, concepts, and tools, and along the way introduce some new ones, notably neutral theory, the coalescent theory, and molecular population genetics or sometimes called population genomics. Population genetics has essentially evolved in three major but overlapping thrusts, beginning with the discovery of genetic mechanisms in experimental breeding populations, moving to the mathematical deductions derived from those mechanisms together with principles of evolution, and subsequently to the accumulation of genetic observations and empirical phenomena of real populations, reinforcing and extending the synthesis of those concepts. The absolute flood of empirical data afforded by DNA sequence and polymorphism detection has clearly changed the game. Molecular population genetics gives us descriptive tools based on variation in nucleotide sequences typically obtained by comparisons among sets of aligned sequence. We begin our discussion with brief introductions to some very important but complicated concepts, the neutral theory of molecular evolution and the coalescent theory. In the 1960s, a number of scientists led by Moto Kimura, proposed the neutral theory of molecular evolution to explain the very high levels of genetic variation being found in natural populations using new techniques for detecting polymorphisms, notably allozymes. The neutral theory does not deny selection exists, only that it is less common than drift in determining the fate of new alleles. It argues that most single nucleotide differences, SNPs, have accumulated at the same rate as individuals with mutations are, are born, which is predictable based on known mutation rates. Among other things, the neutral theory provides the foundation for the concept of the molecular clock, though differences in the rate of mutations among genes must be considered when doing so. The mathematics of genetic drift provides the theoretical expectations for expected levels of genetic diversity and new allele fixation in a population. Perhaps most importantly, the neutral theory provides a null hypothesis, much like the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, by which the behavior of alleles in populations can be measured. By comparing contrasting approaches to measuring molecular genetic diversity, theta, as expected under the neutral theory, we can make inferences about how the patterns of diversity we see came to be. We refer to these comparisons as test of neutrality. Before we move on, we introduce the concept of coalescent theory. While neutrality theory provides predictions of what may be, coalescent theory provides a retrospective model of population genetics. It employs a sample of individuals from a population to trace all alleles of a gene shared by all members of the population to a single ancestral copy, known as the most recent common ancestor, or MRCA. This is sometimes also termed the co-ancestor to emphasize the coalescent. 
The inheritance relationship between alleles are typically represented as a gene genealogy, as noted here. This gene genealogy is also known as the coalescent. Understanding the statistical properties of the coalescent under different assumptions forms the basis of coalescent theory. The coalescent informs us how patterns of variation came to be and may also reflect why they came to be. The coalescent plays an important role in determining whether results of test and neutrality are statistically significant. So how do we measure genetic diversity? You will recall from Module 3 that traditional measures of population level genetic variation are captured by allele and genotype frequencies, the number of alleles per locus, proportion of polymorphic loci, and estimates of observed and expected heterozygosity. Heterozygosity, in turn, is used to formulate measures of inbreeding and population differentiation by means of Wright's F statistics and Nay's G statistics. We will return briefly to these when we discuss organization of genetic diversity. These measures work very well for many marker types, especially those that reflect actual genes, like blood groups or allozymes, for instance. In other words, interpreting their patterns has evolutionary relevance. SNP markers are treated with different but analogous measures that have been developed to describe and quantify this type of variation. We now introduce measures of genetic variation based on analysis of DNA sequence comparisons. The first is simply defined as a proportion of nucleotide, NT, bases in a string, in a defined string of bases that are polymorphic in a population. We call the string of bases, however long, an aplicon. This measure is analogous to the proportion of polymorphic loci identified in the previous slide. Denoted as S, and entitled here as segregating sites, it distinguishes between monomorphic and polymorphic nucleotide bases. It identifies differences, but does not account for population frequencies, so its calculated value is driven by the number of nucleotide sites that vary in your sample, and the size of the amplicon being evaluated. S values vary by location within the gene, across the genome, and within and among populations and species. In this hypothetical example, one could say that a SNP occurred in this amplicon on average every 10 bases. This measure has diminished in use recently. One of the many methods of quantifying nucleotide diversity, or polymorphism, is theta w, which relies on the previously calculated parameter s to estimate expected diversity under neutrality. Theta w is sometimes called theta s because it is a scaled version of s. An intuitive thing to ask here is why the summation in the denominator moves from 1 to n minus 1. The index i in the summation is really indexing the bins in the site frequency spectrum. n is not a bin in the site frequency spectrum because a site that is polymorphic in n out of n sequences really isn't polymorphic. You are encouraged to read a current edition of Hartle for a comprehensive definition of the site frequency spectrum. Perhaps the most common measure of information content in molecular sequences is that of nucleotide diversity, often denoted as pi or theta pi. Nucleotide diversity is a measure of polymorphism expressed as the mean number of nucleotide substitutions per site between any two randomly selected DNA sequences in a population. It is calculated as a proportion 
dividing the total number of pairwise differences by the total number of pairwise comparisons across the amplicon. Let's consider the example in this slide. The amplicon is 40 nucleotide bases in length, and we have sequence for five chromosomes for this amplicon. We know from previous slides there are four segregating sites at which we can tally pairwise differences. For each nucleotide, there are n times n minus 1 divided by 2 comparisons. That's 5 times 4 divided by 2 equals 10. So our denominator is 10 times 40 equals 400. For the 36 monomorphic nucleotides, there are zero pairwise differences. For the polymorphic sites, the number of pairwise differences can be calculated easily by multiplying the numbers of each alternative allele. For instance, at size 5, there are 4 t's and 1 g. 4 times 1 equals 4. Adding all pairwise differences and dividing by total number of comparisons yields data pi. In this case, data pi is equal to 0 0.057 a value slightly higher than theta w, which equaled 0 0.048, as calculated on the previous slide. Nucleotide diversity differs from the measure of nucleotide polymorphism in that it accounts for both nucleotide differences and population allele frequencies. It is analogous to the measure of heterozygosity noted in slide 6 of this model. Though not shown here, there are actually many alternative measures of theta pi. We have shown you two of the common parameters used to estimate genetic diversity in molecular sequences. There are others, as indicated here, each based on calculating diversity on slightly different categories of SNPs. Though we will not discuss these alternatives much more here, much has been written about them, and they beg the question, are all SNPs the same or of equal relevance in measures of diversity? One thing to point out here is that some of the equations shown here are different than what was covered earlier. There are many different ways to calculate these diversity estimates. The earlier equations are based on actual data patterns. The equations here use linear combinations of counts from the site sequency frequency spectrum. You will have to trust us when we say the equations produce the same estimates, but in different ways. Suffice it to say, this is a confusing area of science that is still sifting to its final conclusion. Logic would suggest that only those SNPs that occur in non-synonymous sites within the coding regions of genes or regulatory elements would be under selection or of interest to a breeder or manager. But genetics often seems to defy logic. SNPs in non-coding regions or at synonymous sites within a codon are occasionally found to be statistically associated with traits of interest. The proliferation of parameter estimates for genetic diversity provide means of testing the neutral theory of evolution. But this is the province of our last section of this module, interpretation, so we will defer further in-depth discussion for a few more slides. We noted earlier that measures of diversity vary widely across classes, for instance, genes, individuals, and species. Here we illustrate a comparison of nucleotide diversity as measured by pi for a number of species. Though somewhat dated, the figure is still useful for illustration and discussion. In this case, theta pi is calculated for known gene sequences, though we cannot tell from this figure exactly what that means. For instance, where values calculated from the entire gene are only bite-size amplicons from only amino acid coding nucleotides, or from introns as well, and so forth. Furthermore, the sample of genes tested, though known numerically, is not identified here. It would be preferable to compare the same genes in all species. Still, 
It would appear from these data that humans have relatively less genetic diversity than trees, corn, and fruit fly. Would you care to infer the evolutionary significance of these differences? We conclude this section of this module on mo measuring diversity with this table that shows the estimates of diversity we have introduced for 16 known genes that were resequenced in an array of loblolly pine individual trees. The number of trees is denoted by n. S is the number of segregating sites. Theta is a value we introduced as theta w, and pi is a parameter theta pi. Note that polymorphisms are detected for synonymous and non-synonymous codons within coding sequences and in non-coding sequences, for instance, introns, of these genes. Though we do not know from this table what proportion of the genes were evaluated, the estimates were typically for amplicons that exceeded several hundreds of nucleotide bases. What can we infer from these data? First, it would appear that polymorphisms occur are more likely are retained more frequently in silent positions than in positions that would code for amino acid substitutions. Indeed, one-fourth of the loci have no polymorphisms in coding regions, perhaps implying strong selection against mutation in these genes. We also see considerable variation in diversity measures among loci. Note that all diversity values are multiplied by 1,000 for ease of reading. You may have noted the column headed Tajimus D. This is a measure of neutrality, which we will discuss at some length later in this module. Once covered, you may wish to come back to this slide for enhanced understanding. Naturally, Many alternative approaches exist for characterizing and describing how genetic diversity is organized. We will very briefly discuss three of these approaches. Historically, Wright's F statistics and related measures, such as Nay's G statistics, have been workhorse approaches to describing the distribution of genetic variation or diversity in natural populations. They are typically defined in terms of observed and expected heterozygosities as measured at different levels of population organization. Population organization is usually defined by the investigator. We have already seen Wright's F statistics in a number of slides from earlier modules, an obvious, if not always intuitive, reflection of the wide range of applications and interpretations one can draw from these parameters. At the root of it, the F statistics provide an estimate of the level of inbreeding, that is, excess of homozygous rel relative to Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, for defined populations or groupings. They may be calculated for each of many, typically arbitrarily defined, levels of genetic hierarchy, thus allowing for estimates of how variation is distributed. F statistics are calculated using the parameters of observed and or expected heterozygosity for each level of the hierarchy. In this slide, only two levels are noted, subpopulation and metapopulation. It could have easily been population and species, or provenance and subspecies, etc. Thus, Wright's FST has become a highly used parameter for many applications. It can be used across a spectrum of marker types, including most forms of DNA sequence markers, with appropriate data manipulations. It can be calculated by locus or averaged over loci to provide genome level estimates of how diversity is apportioned within or among populations. Though the scale for FST runs from 0 to 1, where 0 would suggest allele frequencies were identical in all populations, and 1 would imply fixation for alternative alleles in different populations, 
large values are seldom observed in forest trees. For most conifer species with large ranges and extensive wind-pollinated populations, FST is very typically less than 0.05. Consequently, for most polymorphisms, most variation, say greater than 90%, is found within populations. This is consistent with the neutral theory of evolution and genetic drift. But FST, like the diversity estimators, varies by locus and it is in those loci that are exceptions to the rule, that is higher than expected due to demographics alone, that we find evidence for selection. We will return to this point at the end of the module. We conclude the organizational discussion of F statistics with an example of how they were used in a study of the population structure of lodgepole pine, a widespread species that ranges from Mexico to the Yukon. Lodgepole pine is recognized to have four subspecies, a coastal subspecies from Alaska to California, an interior subspecies that covers the vast mountainous interior, a Sierra Cascade mountain subspecies, and a tiny endemic population along the California coast, represented by dwarfish trees. Applying F statistics to 42 alizyme loci showed that most variation, as previously noted, occurs within populations, and that populations and subspecies are not that differentiated. However, a study of a number of morphometric traits associated with cones and seeds painted a very different picture. The inference drawn here, from how variation was distributed, was that the morphometric traits were likely to be under strong selective pressure, and the alizymes were not. This procedure for partitioning diversity in molecular markers is referred to as an analysis of molecular variance, or AMOVA, by analogy with the ubiquitous statistical procedure analysis of variance, called ANOVA. Like right statistics, the analysis can include several levels in the hierarchy. The approach requires that one convert raw differences in sequence into a mutational measure of distance. Wright's F is based upon comparison of gene frequencies among populations. However, molecular data reveals not only the frequency of molecular markers, but can also tell us something about the amount of mutational difference between different genes. AMOVA is a method of estimating population differentiation directly from molecular data and testing hypotheses about such differentiation. A variety of molecular marker data, direct sequence data, or phylogenetic trees based on such molecular data may be analyzed using this method. A nice thing to point out here is that the basic idea of a mutational distance is to account for the fact that some alleles differ by, say, five mutations, and some only by one mutation. Consequently, allele frequency differences among populations should be weighted by how many different the alleles are. Variance components, calculated from expected mean squares, can be used to calculate a series of statistics called phi statistics, such which summarize the degree of differentiation between population divisions and are analogous to F statistics. A phi statistic can be treated as a hypothesis about differentiation at that level of a population. For example, phi st can be treated as a hypothesis about differentiation between the population and its component subpopulations. These hypotheses can be tested using the null distribution of the variance components. If the variance of the subpopulations does not significantly differ from the null distribution of the variance of the population, the hypothesis that those subpopulations are differentiated from a larger population would be rejected. The AMOVA analysis relies on matrix algebra. It is freely available in programs such as Arlequin, a software package for population genetics data analysis.
a very different approach to looking at how genetic variation is distributed or organized in natural populations is provided by a program called Structure. The program Structure is a free software package for using multi-locus genotype data to investigate population structure. Its uses include inferring the presence of distinct populations, assigning individuals to populations, studying hybrid zones, identifying migrants and admixed individuals, and estimating population allele frequencies in situations where many individuals are migrants or admixed. It can be applied to most of the commonly used genetic markers, including microsatellites and SNPs. Structure offers flexibility in defining certain population characteristics. While the program has a number of applications of interest to population geneticists, it has become popular with those seeking to apply association genetics in natural populations. This is particularly true in forest genetics where widespread populations may possess considerable population structure simply due to historical demographics. Distinguishing between associations caused by stochastic events and associations that are causal between mutation and phenotype may be difficult but efforts to, to do so are necessary to avoid false positive associations. To this point, we have covered how genetic diversity is measured for various types of polymorphisms and discussed some of the ways to investigate how it is organized. The discussion was by no means complete in either regard but it does provide a foundation for further investigation. Free software is available online for calculating virtually all of the parameters mentioned to this point. Once the genetic diversity of species has been characterized, the obvious and interesting questions arise. What does it mean? How did it get that way? Often the answers point to stochastic events such as drift, founder effects, and migration. While these forces are interesting, Evolutionary biologists are most intrigued by patterns of diversity and organization that reflect the influence of selection. As a consequence, a number of approaches to identify signatures of selection have been developed over the years, particularly so since DNA sequence has become so available. The lewinton krakauer test was the first test for evidence of selection using molecular markers and is still used widely today. For a given population, F statistics may be calculated on an individual locus basis. Assuming no selection, for instance neutral theory, F should be relatively uniform across loci. Excessive values, as determined using a chi-squared test, are most likely to be an indicator of selection acting on that particular locus. Naturally, a number of newer approaches to calculating FST outliers have been developed and are statistically a bit different, but similar in spirit. For instance, Bayes FT, that is Bayes FST, and F distribution, or F dist. The program Arlequin version 3.5 mentioned earlier now implements both of these outlier approaches as described by X. Scofier in 2009. The concept can be extended to include both within and among population, or subpopulations or deems, of measures of diversity. The basic principles are these. 1. Under the neutral theory of evolution, most loci are not under selection. 2. Those loci not under selection will share similar F values. And 3. Loci under selection will deviate from the norm and may be identified as outliers. To identify signatures of selection, investigators have developed a range of tests, virtually all being based on the null hypothesis that the loci are operating under the neutral theory. 
These measures of neutrality are typically built on parameters we have introduced earlier in this module, namely theta pi, or nucleotide diversity, and theta s, or w, or nucleotide polymorphism, and often are calculated for specific subsets of polymorphisms, as indicated in this table. The most frequently cited of these approaches is probably Tajima's D. The purpose of Tajima's D test, like the others noted previously, is to identify sequences which do not fit the neutral theory model at equilibrium between mutation and genetic drift. In order to perform the test on a DNA sequence or gene, you need to sequence homologous DNA for at least three individuals. Tajima's statistic computes a standardized measure of the total number of segregating sites. These are DNA sites that are polymorphic in the sample DNA and the average number of mutation between pairs in the sample. The two quantities whose values are compared are both method of moments estimates of the population genetic parameter theta and so are expected to equal the same value. If these two numbers only differ by as much as one could reasonably expect by chance, then the null hypothesis of neutrality cannot be rejected. Otherwise, the null hypothesis of neutrality is rejected. Another common class of tests for neutrality are based on measures of diversity and divergence. These include the MK, or mcdonald kreitman test, and the HKA test, as shown on slide 25. The MK test of neutrality is built on the idea that the differences at the amino acid level observed in protein sequences across species have evolved by the accumulation of neutral mutations by random drift or by fixation of the adaptive mutations by selection, or a mixture of the two. The test is a g-test of independence to test the null hypothesis that the ratio of the replacement to synonymous fixed substitutions should be the same as the ratio of replacement to non-synonymous polymorphisms under the assumption of neutrality. Though we could easily spend entire modules of greater length than this one on just the topic of test of neutrality and the interpretation of those tests, suffice it to say that many and varied tests exist and that each can contribute to our understanding of whether specific polymorphisms or the genes within which they reside are directly under the influence of selection strong enough to detect. Given that they appear to be so, it remains to be determined what role that gene plays in the organism. Finding polymorphisms that show signatures of selection and simultaneously are statistically associated with a phenotypic trait provides very strong evidence that a gene of great interest to the biologist or breeder has been identified. We conclude this module with a reference to a freely available online resource that makes calculations for most of the tests of neutrality a breeze. It is called DNA SAM, and it resides at the website shown on the external links slide at the end of this module. The author of the software describes it as follows. Patterns of DNA polymorphisms observed within populations can be used to understand the processes of demography, adaptation, and ultimately speciation. These patterns are typically quantified using the site frequency spectrum. The shape of this spectrum is understood theoretically under genetic drift, various demographic scenarios, and with some forms of natural selection. DNA-SAM addresses the challenges of data manipulation, summary statistic estimation, and statistical hypothesis testing for large-scale resequencing projects. The program is capable of performing a large number of standard and newly designed tests of neutrality for multiple sequence alignments of resequenced gene loci. In addition, 
the program allows hypothesis testing using complex and user-specified null models.